the world, uh, it is our greatest pleasure and privilege to be with you, and not only to be with you, but accompanied also by uh, our guest, who is the chairperson of the Lansing Juneteenth Committee for 12 years now. And uh, also, she's a, an active and dynamic uh, and brilliant student of Master of Science in Business Administration at the University of Phoenix. And uh, her name is Deborah Plummer, right here with me. Deborah, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Thank you so much for accepting to join us in this dialogue with the world audience of Radio really Eugene Gottfried International Television. Glad to be here. Wonderful. Deborah, you are, as I said in the introduction, the chairperson of uh, the Lansing Juneteenth Committee. Of course, our listening brothers and sisters and uh, my viewers from so many countries of the world would want to know what is Juneteenth all about? You never heard of Juneteenth. Well, and uh, of course we're going to clarify on this, certainly, your, your brothers and sisters, don't we? Certainly. Okay. So, um, uh, brothers and sisters, let us listen attentively to our guest, your guest, Deborah Plummer, who will explain to us what is um, Juneteenth, the content of it, how it started, how it's developing. And then thereafter, we're going to look at what are the state of situation currently with all of this. Please be with us. And uh, Deborah, just go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, what is Juneteenth? Juneteenth is actually um, a slave term, which was given actually by the slaves back in um, 1863. What Juneteenth represents is the, the freedom from slavery. Uh, the history of Juneteenth actually has been lost, left out of the history book for a number of years. It just has been more recent that more cities, more states are adopting having a Juneteenth celebration and, and acknowledging what Juneteenth really means. What Juneteenth really means is that slavery ended for, for us as blacks. Um, actually in 1863. However, it took about two years before the communications actually reached all states uh, to, to be notified that their slaves were free. Now there were many reasons for this. Um, number one, the means of communication at the time were not very good. Number two, uh, economics. It was this, for the slave owners who did not really want to let their slaves go, basically they held back information that they knew. So as a result of these things and the breakdowns and the barriers that um, came about, the last known state to be notified that we as slaves were free was the state of Texas. June 19, 1865. So that, that's where the term Juneteenth came from. June 19, 1865, freedom from slavery. So what has happened since then? Well, since then, what we have tried to do as a committee and what other committees throughout the United States are doing is, first of all, they're teaching the history of Juneteenth. Juneteenth was a significant point in history that must be recognized. The reason that it was not recognized is because many of our officials, past and present, did not want to admit to slavery, that, it, that, that this was a, actually something that happened to a group of people. But in reality, it happened. And the realism is, is painful, um, but you have to accept what's happened in order to, to move forward. And so we as a people have acknowledged here in Lansing that 
Juneteenth is worthy of its, of its knowledge, of its place in history. It's worthy of people to understand what Juneteenth is about. Juneteenth not only freed the slaves, but actually everyone was in a position of being in bondage. However, it happened to, uh, it happened to the blacks throughout history. We were taken from our homeland in Africa, moved away, not given a choice, to till the land, to make life better for others. So where are we now with Juneteenth? In, in order, now that we understand the history, where are we now with this? Well, where we are now is that we've got to get beyond the point of uh, being held back. There's no there's no longer a bondage for us. We have to reach out to the opportunities that are before us. And this is what our, you know, my belief, my deep hearted belief is that this is what our ancestors taught. They taught us how to overcome. We were against all the odds. We came to a place that we knew nothing about. Communication was not effective because we did not understand what the slave masters, their language, so we actually had to develop some things within ourselves to survive. We came through a time where um, our inner beauty, um, our art of beauty, uh, was not recognized. It, it, it was looked at as a bad, a hateful thing. Um, we had to over the bondage and the barriers that that caused, not only for our ancestors, it still occurs within us, even as we live today. But in order for us to progress, as a people, and in order for us to make the marks that we need to in history, we have to also pass down to the generations that are to come the strength to overcome, the ability to take the opportunities that present themselves to us. We also have to believe in ourselves that we have the courage, we have the knowledge, we have Everything, all of the God-given talents that God put in a human, we have. So there's nothing shameful, there's nothing ugly, there's nothing demeaning about that. And, and that's what we have to teach. That, that's what we have to teach. We have to believe in ourselves if nobody else does. We've got to prepare the future generations, right? That's correct. For, for, for the task to change the world. They've got to carry on the banner. They, they've got to maintain this history of ours. And they need to know that where they stand in this story. That's right. And where to choose. Right. For never again to choose wrongly. That's correct. For the exploiters, for the oppressors, mm -hmm. for the racists, or what have you. Not even to get a degree. That's right. Or not even to get a job or whatever. See, that's why we have to keep the history there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for having uh, invested this time in this dialogue with us and our world viewers and world listeners right here at Radio Eugene Gottfried International Television. And we want to wish you lots of success in your day-to-day -day work. Above all, good health. Yes. And uh, to continue doing your good work as the chairperson of the Lensing Juneteenth Committee. And of course, you will soon be a master of science in business administration and to continue studying, studying, studying our history in our affairs yeah. in order to keep on contributing and I am Eugene Gottfried yours in steadfast friendship thank you keep on pushing keep on pushing I've got to keep on pushing I can't stop now